Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about Walksnail. Well, not this one. This is a new one waiting to go into a model. Uh, I'm a big fan of Walksnail. I've come from the uh, analog side of the world. I flew quite a lot of DJI, still fly a lot of DJI, but the Walksnail stuff has been slowly replacing the models that I love that I fly in analog. The last one that I'm doing at the moment is updating my beloved ZOHD Dart. This was upgraded to a Brain Dart. The Brain Dart has the Brain FPV Radix Li um, fixed wing flight system in here. Originally it was put in there because it has a vector based on screen display and was fantastic but it's not getting flown. So I got my hands on another Avatar 1S unit for the walk signal system and I'm putting this in the nose. Now while I was playing with it on the bench and doing all the setup I'm using my bench power supply to power it. That's the Toolkit RC P200. Uh, works incredibly well and while I was there flashing this thing it was pulling about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of an amp, just kind of in standby mode as it was doing the updating. As I'm sat there looking at it, I had a light bulb moment. Because of course on the power supply, I can not only set the voltage that I want to power it from, I can also see the amount of current that's been drawn, and I can also see the amount of watts that's been pulled from that power supply. Now I did a video a little while ago where I showed how I'd install one of these Avatar 1S whoop boards into the nose of my ZOHD Drift and having a ton of fun with that. So I thought, well, hang on a minute. There was lots of questions on that original video about how much current does it draw? Because in the end, I used a slightly wacky way of powering it using a Matek 5 volt BEC with a diode in series to drop the voltage down to 4.1, which is kind of what you'd expect from a single cell LiPo battery, which is what these things are designed to run for. Now, those BECs are rated for 1.5 amps. So while I'm sat there doing the updating, I had a flash of inspiration because I had been asked so much about what is the kind of current levels that these 1S boards are pulling. I thought, well, I've kind of got the setup here, haven't I? So let's run it at three and a half, four, four and a half and five volts. Let's turn off the dynamic power or the standby mode in the goggles and let's check it at 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts and 500 milliwatts, which is actually going to be the maximum power of 350 milliwatts. So it's going to be a slight jump, but let's do all that and then figure it out. A couple of things about this, I'm running firmware 2933.16 set to 720p and I had to get my wife to help with this because I was setting everything in the goggles. We had everything cooled by a fan on the desk, but you have to do for things like this. And she was having to read off the numbers off the screen. Now the numbers do jump around a bit, so she was trying to guess what the average value was. We filled in the tables and I thought it'd be fun to kind of share what the results were because it was interesting for me. So here is the first set of results. This is how much current the Avatar 1S pulled for each of the voltages. So we've got three and a half volts here, four volts, four and a half volts and five volts. So it's the voltage along the bottom axis up here on the left hand side it's the average amp draw again estimated because the numbers jump around uh, my wife did a fantastic job of trying to figure out what the average number was going to be now the three colors the blue is 25 milliwatts red is 200 milliwatts and green is 500 milliwatts and what you'll see here there's on the lower voltages and this is kind of what you'd expect to see the 1S avatar unit is pulling more current for each of the power levels. So for example, if you supply it with three and a half volts, it's going to pull slightly more current at the 25 milliwatt power level than if you run it at five volts and run it at the maximum power level, which is actually not 500 milliwatts, it's actually 350, which is the maximum for these boards. And you can see here that surprise, surprise, the current does increase. You'd expect it to as you go from 25 to 200 to 350 milliwatts, you would see the current increase, but it's not massive. We are only talking about the difference of probably about 0.8 of an amp between the 25 milliwatts and the 500 milliwatts. Most of this current is being used and drawn, the power's being used to actually run the avatar unit, and that's pretty standard for HD FPV systems. You need quite a bit of horsepower banging away to be able to get the signal down the goggles in a reasonable time frame. The maximum amperage used was actually here at the 350 milliwatt setting, or 500 milliwatt in the goggles, for the three and a half volts. That was coming out at 1.24 amps, 
when using three and a half volts. The lowest current was actually here, which is 0.85 amps, which was the 25 milliwatt setting at five volts. Interestingly, as I mentioned in the beginning, the setup that I was doing in the flashing, it doesn't run anywhere near this. When it isn't actually live and connected to the goggles, the avatar unit is kind of ticking over at about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 amps, and it kind of runs at that level when you're doing the updating too. So increasing the voltage supplied does reduce the current, which is good to know, and that's kind of what you'd expect. But what about the power levels? Well, the power levels, kind of tell a similar story. Interestingly though, as the voltage increases, the power levels pulled from the power supply change a little bit as well. Now there isn't a massive difference in terms of the consumed or the power usage in watts, again, estimated from the power supply. Again, the majority of this is probably just the needed for the avatar unit itself rather than the transmission because we only go up very slightly in terms of average wattage between the 25 milliwatts 200 milliwatts and the 500 milliwatts maximum power that's pulled is over here at the 5 volt this here is about 4.9 watts that's running at the 350 milliwatts power level so that's 500 in the goggles but i think it's actually 350. the minimum power that was used was actually over here on the 3.5 volts so at 3.5 volts it's about 3.7 watts when set to the 25 milliwatt power level so this is a little bit interesting because I didn't expect it to look exactly like that. However, I think there's a more useful way to look at this data. This is the amp draw per voltage and power level. So here on the left hand side, we have the average amp draw. And rather than have it ordered by the voltage, I've actually got it ordered by the power level. So here's the three power levels we tested, 25 milliwatts, 200 and 500 milliwatts. And you can see that 3.5 volts causes the lowest amount. And as you increase the voltage for each power level, the amount of average amp draw goes down, which is good news, right? Because you kind of expect that because wattage or the amount of power being used is voltage times current. So as you increase the voltage, it should reduce the current that's being used. So that kind of makes perfect sense. Three and a half volts actually causes the most current to be pulled. It's gonna to need to pull a bit more in order for the volts times amps to get to the number it needs to. And similarly, when you're running at five volts, it's gonna cause the least amount of current to be drawn from the power supply. But what about if we then look at this from the average power. This is the watts, again, 25, 200 and 500 milliwatts along the bottom. And these four bars now are the three and a half volts, four and a half volts, five and a half volts that we've just looked at in the previous slide. There's something a little bit weird going on. At 25 milliwatts, you can see that as you increase the voltage, the power level goes up slightly, which is a little bit odd. And then as you go to 200 and 500 milliwatts, you can see that kind of same kind of increase going on. So by actually reducing the voltage a little bit, you will then reduce the amount of watts that you're pulling from the power supply. Now this is a bit weird because what it means is that the also the amount of watts that's being consumed by the unit is also gonna be converted into heat. So running at five volts, Although it's probably going to pull the least current, it's probably going to be dissipating the most heat for the unit. Whereas running it on four volts, which is the green one, if we go back, you can see here that, okay, we actually pull a little bit more current, but if we use four and a half volts or even four volts, which is more what I'm running mine at here, it's about actually 4.1, we actually, are dissipating quite a bit less heat than five volts. However, it does mean that potentially we are going to be pulling a little bit more current. 
The interesting thing with this for me is that it doesn't go anywhere near the one and a half volts maximum, which is kind of the way over the top of this slide would be, that's gonna cause a problem for that BEC. And that kind of makes sense for what I'm seeing here. My units, even if I did fly them at maximum power, is only going to be pulling about 1.1 something amps. So well below the 1.5 amp maximum that I have available. The other thing as well is by using 4.1 volts, I'm actually asking a little bit less in terms of the heat dissipation, I think, inside the avatar unit. So the amount of watts that the unit is consuming and having to dissipate in a large part as heat has been dropped as well, and that should help with cooling. So hopefully that helps for those of you that were interested in this. Uh, running a 1.5 amp BEC, as I've actually experienced here, in real life is absolutely fine. You're not going to get near that with the settings that I'm using here. And nicely, it kind of also proves that the idea of me dropping some of the voltage going into the avatar unit and not running it at 5 volts gives me a little bit of a benefit. I use slightly more current, but in terms of the watts consumed, it's a little bit less, which will help keep everything that little bit cooler. But hopefully, now if you're gonna be using the 1S stuff and you're looking to set this up, give you an extra level of comfort that my little trick of using the Matek 5 volt BEC with something like a IN4001 diode or something like that to drop a little bit of the voltage, kind of makes sense and gonna work for you. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.